Hi, Christina. I'm going to try to help you here with number four, kind of get you going. Um, it says to use symmetry zeros and maximum R values to graph the function. So you could do a t-chart to figure out some values. Um, but the idea on this one is to try to look at the properties to help you out. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is look at symmetry. And right away, I can see that I have a sign. So if there is a sign in your function, it's going to have symmetry about the line theta equals um, pi over 2. Okay, I know that. If it were a cosine, then it would have symmetry about the line theta equals 0. But for this one, this is the symmetry. So whatever's on the right is going to be on the left. Whatever's on the left is going to be on the right. The other question of symmetry is whether it has pole symmetry, which is about the origin. And so it's more of like a diagonal symmetry. Um, so I'm going to test this equation out. I want to know if r theta, that point, is has an equivalent point, point with r pi plus theta. That's going to be my test for pole symmetry. And so this is where I use the identities um, from a few chapters ago to help this out. So basically is if I have theta, which is 4 sine of 3 theta, the original problem, is there going to be equivalent values at 4 sine of 3 pi plus theta? And so I'm looking for it to be this. So I'm going to manipulate the right side of the equation. And I have 4 then sine of 3 pi plus 3 theta. And so is what's in the brackets? Um, we need to figure out what that is. So we have sine of a sum, and that is sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. All right, so we're going to use this to simplify the right side. So I have 4 um, and then sine of 3 pi cosine of 3 theta plus cosine of 3 pi sine of 3 theta. So sine of 3 pi, that's the same as the sine of pi, which is 0. And the cosine of 3 pi would be the same as the cosine of pi, which is negative 1. So let me get this thing to move a little bit. OK, so that's 0. And this is going to give me 4 times negative 1 sine of 3 theta. So this says that 4 sine of 3 theta then would be equal to negative 4 sine of 3 theta, which is not true. So it does not have whole symmetry, which that's important, just as important to know as it is if it has, if it does have whole symmetry, because we know that we're not going to have um, a reflection diagonally. Okay. The next thing we see is where are my zeros? So the zeros are just that. When I have put an input in, what, where is my output? And so if we think about the unit circle, okay, um, for sine. Sine is our y value from the unit circle. 
we're going to have zeros at um, at zero, okay? Because this is one zero. Um, this is negative one zero. At pi over two, it's going to be zero one. And at three pi over two, it's going to be zero negative one. And so those are our zeros, but they're also going to be where our maximum values are, or that's where we're going to look for our maximum values. So our zeros happen at zero. So if I put zero in for, I've got my equation here, r, r equals four sine of three theta. If I put zero in for theta, well, that's still going to, that's going to be the four times the sine of zero, basically, because the sine of three theta is going to be zero, because that's going to land us at um, three times zero is zero, right? So I'm going to have a zero at zero. And then I also have, um, if I put pi in there, that's going to be three pi. Well, three pi is equivalent to pi because that's two pi plus pi. So, which lands me over here, which that's a pi. And then it's kind of started that pattern. Then when I come back around um, to zero, I'm going to have it again. So, two pi, three pi, right? And so forth. But really after two pi, it doesn't matter because we're back at zero again. Okay, and then I have my max values. So we're going to look at the same thing there. Well, the max values would be four. <clears throat> four units from zero. And so where does that happen? Well, when sine of three pi is one or negative one, that's going to put us out four units from zero. So where is it one? Well, it's one at um, pi over two. So what's equivalent to pi over two? So when three theta is equal to pi over two, um, if I multiply by one third, I'm gonna get theta is pi over six. So that tells me that I have a max of one at pi over six. And I also have one at, um, even though it's negative one, it's still considered a maximum value because it's its distance from the origin. So where does that happen? At negative one, well, where does three pi or three theta equal three pi over two? So you got to figure out what that theta is. Again, I'm going to multiply by um, one third. And when theta is pi over two, I'm going to have a value of negative one. So I have another zero at negative one over two. So I've got a lot of good information here. So let's see. I've got, let's go back up here to our graph. I know that at zero, I'm going to have a zero. I know at pi, I'm going to have a zero. So keep, keep think that I'm going to come back there. I have a max at pi over six, which is four units. And so since this is symmetrical about the line pi over two, on the opposite side, I'm gonna have a maximum value. And then at, I think we said, at pi over two, I have a value of negative one, which is gonna give me um, negative four, because I have to multiply by four. So even though I'm at pi over two, I have to go the opposite direction and I end up down here. So that's a maximum value as well. And symmetry on that point is just right back at the same, same value. So based on what I have given, I'm gonna start here at zero. I'm gonna make a little loop. So this is gonna give me a flower. I'm gonna go here, here, and 
here. And so that's how I would go about using that. Can you use a, um, a chart? You could, absolutely. But if I use those properties, it's going to at least give me an idea of what shape I'm going to have.